Okay, you're gonna like this and not like this at the same time. This little OBD2 thing that you gave me for the computer is working really, really well under Windows 7. I'm gonna show you how I did it. So, I know you can barely see it, but look at that little orange light that's in the center of the screen. That's the LED on the sensor, and that's plugged into my OBD2 um, receptacle on the car. So I've already done that part. We're coming up the cable here into my USB port. Um, pretty much everything happened automatically, except I had to adjust my COM port settings. So I'm going to show you real quick what I did, and it was really simple. I have the lights on in here. I'm trying to get you to see as much as possible, but I can tell from the LCD screen that it doesn't look like it's super clear, but anyway. So I'm going to Device Manager, and we're going to come down here to Ports. So what happened, I plugged this thing in. I didn't install the drivers from the disk. Um, I plugged it into the USB port. Windows 7 detected it automatically. It checked Windows Update for drivers, and it just installed drivers for a USB to serial converter, nothing else. So apparently this isn't a very complex chip. It's just a USB serial converter. So I imagine that the OBD2 system is just a UART 16, whatever they call it, but it's just a fancy word for a serial connection. Anyway, we're going to come in here. I'm going to go into the properties. You can hopefully see down here. This is the device right there. It just says USB serial port COM1. I actually adjusted that. Um, when it first installed, it automatically installed as a uh, as COM5. But at least under Windows 7, and Vista should be similar. But I went into the properties for the device. I went to the port settings tab up here. And then I went down to advanced. And because it the program started looking for it at COM1, it gave you options to change it, but um, I was having problems with it, so I came up here, and because COM1 was not in use, I went ahead and adjusted it to COM1. If you change this on your computer, make sure that um, the, uh, the diagnostic software is closed, because for some reason, even though it was not configured to use COM1, I had already configured it to use COM5 and, and restarted it a couple times, it still had the port open for some reason which tells me that it may have issues locking onto other ports. So I saved that, I took the defaults and everything else. You can see the bot is set to 9600, which is a little bit weird because it doesn't, it doesn't match the diagnostic software settings, which I will show you in a second. So we're already plugged in and we're already on COM1. So I'm gonna double click on this. Oh, by the way, I had to set this to 16-bit color um, in Windows 7 because if I didn't set it to 16-bit color, it would automatically revert it to 16-bit. Windows 7 saw there was a compatibility issue with it. It would revert it to 16-bit um, color anyway. But then I got really weird like display issues with this program. Like I'd click a button, it wouldn't do anything, and I would have to click like this and move the window, and then it would show up. And that was every time I clicked it. And it's really annoying for when you go into the sensor data because it wouldn't refresh automatically. You had to move it to get it to update. So if you have problems with it, just set your colors to 16-bit and at least on my system that fixed it. Anyway, so I don't know if you've installed this program or not, but if you move the mouse over, you can see that the description has changed. So like I said, we're already configured, but I'm gonna show you in options the one important thing that I did to make this work. So you can see here, it lets you choose between the COM ports. Um, so starting from top to bottom, I just left it at US measurement, it was already there. It was on COM1, I tried to go to COM5 for a while because that's where it automatically installed, but it didn't work. So I adjusted the COM port itself back to one in device manager and then I set this back. It still didn't work. The default baud rate in here was 9600. So I'm like, there's not a lot of options in here so I'll just try it. I went to 38400 and even though the COM port itself is set to 9600 in device manager, this made it work. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel because we didn't actually make any changes in here. But remember that if, if you finally do get the device installed, and um, it's still not working, try setting your baud rate to 38400. So this is the cool part. My car is running right now. I'm burning a lot of gas, but if, I, if it's not running, you can't see all the cool numbers flipping back and forth. So I am in here in the sensor screen, and you can see that it populates. If you look at the top, it's showing you how fast it's updating, um, and then it shows you a bunch of stuff down here. Absolute throttle position, engine RPM, vehicle speed. I'm parked, obviously, so it's zero. Calculated load value, I don't even know what the frick that is. Um, timing advance, whatever. That's changing, so it must be something the, com the computer's controlling. Intake manifold pressure, I don't know why that isn't there. Airflow rate, I don't know what a closed loop fuel system one status is, but there you have it. And there's eight pages of this. So I'm just gonna go through this real quick. 
short term fuel trim bank one no clue what the frick that is power takeoff status in a uh, intake air temperature is 68 degrees coolant temperature is 176 degrees Fahrenheit pretty freaking cool O2 sensor one bank one uh, 0 0.220 volts it's fluctuating back and forth pretty good I don't know I don't know what this crap is OBD conforms to OBD federal EPA whatever the frick that means uh, a bunch of sensors that say NA oh time since engine start I've been running my car at 20 minutes fiddling with this thing I should probably go get some gas I'm pretty low uh, let's see a bunch of stuff evap system vapor pressure 65.707 and H2O again no idea what this crap is uh, warm up since ECU reset 255 distance since ECU set 40,730 miles uh, a bunch of NAs we're on page 6 of 8 7 of 8 cat temperature B1S1 807 degrees Fahrenheit I don't know what that is but must be exhaust or something ECU voltage 14.322 volts uh, let's see accelerator position E 28.2 percent yep so there you have it I'm gonna go back because I'm gonna rev up the engine and watch the stats change so absolute throttle position is 12.5 engine RPM is 620 so let's see if that stuff there you go 4,000 RPMs and it won't go no higher than that yep anyway this thing's pretty freaking cool so uh, I'm gonna send you this video and blah 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 Thank you.